Hi everyone, thank you for joining me and Naham Khan to watch this presentation. My name is Surush Dalili, I live and work in the UK. I'm a pen tester and a bug bounty hunter. I specialize in web application security, but I also enjoy finding vulnerabilities in all kinds of applications. To make my daily tasks easier, I sometimes create small tools. You might have heard of some of them, such as Burp Suite Sharpener or IS Short M Scanning. I'm also one of the judges of top 10 web hacking techniques for a few years now. My journey into security began in the early 2000s when I was an ASP Classic developer. This is perhaps where my love of IAS comes from. Today I will start with an introduction on what short and long file names are in Windows. Then I will continue by explaining the IAS short file name disclosure automatically and manually. Hopefully after this presentation, you can use a simple web proxy to identify an IAS short file name disclosure issue manually. In the end, I will mention some methods to guess the long file names using their short version. I will also talk about a special case when the whole long file name can be enumerated using IAS. Originally, FAT file systems were limited and could only support short names. Short file or directory names contain a maximum of eight characters in the name, and if there is an extension, they would need a dot following by a maximum of three characters as the extension. So in total, their maximum length was 12 characters. Short file names are case insensitive, characters are uppercase. They only contain alphanumerical and some special characters, and there is no space, and they could only contain one dot character following by an extension. For introduction of VFAT, Windows has started supporting long file names since Windows 95. In NTFS, short file names are not needed anymore, but they're still being created by Windows for backwards compatibility when file names do not follow short file names rules. For example, in this case, the file name is more than eight characters, and that's why it has a short file name assigned to it. And in this case, it has more than one dot character, and that's why it has a short file name assigned to it. And in this case, the extension is more than three characters, and that's why it has a short file name equivalent. And in these two files are okay, they are 8.3. Windows did not need to create a short file name and assign it to them. And the last case is web.config, which has a short file name assigned to it because the extension is more than three characters. In order to create short file names for incompatible file names, Windows follows certain rules. Short names normally start with the first six characters of the real file name following by a tilde character following by a number, as you can see here. And then if it has an extension, it will have a dot, and after dot, it uses the first three characters of the file extension. It also removes disallowed characters, or additional dot or space characters. It also changes plus sign to underscore. If a short name equivalent already exists for another file, it increases the number after the tilde character. And if you want to test this in Windows, you can simply run these two commands in the command prompt to get the created short file names. As you can guess, many long names might have the same short names due to its limited space. Before Windows 2000, Windows allowed the number after the tilde character to go as high as 9, but since Windows 2000, this has been limited to 4. The question is, what would happen if there are more than four files with the same short name, now that Windows does not use tilde 5? The formula for making short names changes. It uses the first two characters of the file name, following by four hex characters made by an algorithm. If the file name only has one character, if we use that one character instead of two characters, following by the hex characters. The Higgs algorithm has been explored by Thomas Galvin, and you can read it if you are interested. I also recommend reading these resources here and follow their references as well if you want to go deeper. Here are some early questions that someone might have. So can we have test tilde 2.asp if in the same folder test tilde 1.asp does not exist? The answer is yes. If test tilde 1.asp used to exist and now has been deleted, the system still keeps test tilde 2.asp that was assigned to another file. Can a short file name start with a dot character? The answer is no. 
Windows removes it. So if you have dot file, the short name equivalent is file tilde one. Can a short file name contain more than one tilde character? The answer is yes. Tilde is an unload character itself. So if you have a file that is called ABCD tilde one tilde two dot txt, there is no short name equivalence. It is already short because if you count it, these are just eight characters here. And the extension is three character. So it is 8.3 compatible. And if you have a file that is called test tilde one dot foobar, then the short name will be test tilde one tilde one dot foo. It is confusing, but that's how Windows shortened it. And because the tilde character is allowed, it's it, Windows behave as like this is just a normal character. And here is another example. Will a short file name be deleted automatically after a short name creation is being disabled in Windows? The short answer is no. So it keeps previously created short file names. If you want to remove them completely, the files should be moved somewhere that does not create short file names. So for example, in another directory and then they need to move back. And why I say move? Because they need to be deleted where they are and then they need to be recreated. Which windows disable short file names creation by default? The answer is none. They all by default until today supports them. Also, um, I should say Microsoft recommends to disable it yourself. Now here is where the actual fun begins. IS can disclose short file names using DOS wildcard characters. I initially reported this issue to Microsoft back in 2010, and it still works. Back then, you could also cause a temporary denial of service by causing many file reads by a single request, but that's not an issue as of today. Now the question is, is it a bug or is it a feature? Because Microsoft has not patched it. It can be abused and it has no use. So from my point of view, it is definitely a bug. But what's the risk? It's informational. It's worse than a directory listing, basically, because it doesn't even tell you about the long file names. It only gives you the short file name and you have to guess the long file name yourself. So is it useful at all? Yes, because it can potentially uh, disclose sensitive or vulnerable files. I asked this in my Twitter as well, like if you find a short file name disclosure issue, will you report it to a bug bounty program? And many agreed with me that no, we shouldn't because uh, on its own, it's informational. It is useful, but you can't basically just say, I can see your short file names. It is only useful if you can find the long file names and those long file names are vulnerable. I know it is obvious by now what's affected. So basically all OS versions are affected. But they included this because some people think that this issue does not work on iOS 10. Before we go any further, let's discuss how we can secure it so boring stops will be over. Since the initial report, Microsoft has made some efforts, perhaps indirectly, to stop this and similar attacks by disallowing use of wildcard characters in the URL. But this solution only works for get, post, or head HTTP methods. And so using the debug or options methods, you can still exploit it. Also, sometimes developers need to allow all characters to be included in the URL for their applications to work. Microsoft also limited the number of directories in the URL to 32 to stop the temporary denial of service attack, perhaps, which is a good solution. It is not recommended to increase the default value, and perhaps it is better to even decrease it further. It is also recommended to disable the short file name creation in Windows before creating the website there. But the real issue when you find a vulnerable file is not the disclosure of short names. The vulnerability stays even if you do not disclose the file names. It is therefore recommended to have a proper security test because as we say it always, security by obscurity is not a solution. Here is how IS short file name disclosure simply works. We need a number of ingredients for the attack to work. First, we want to use wildcard characters to enumerate the short names. We also need to use a tilde character following by number one to four. We then need to append a suffix to the URL so IS responds 
differently when a file exists, we also need to use an appropriate HTTP method. So here is an example of how we use these ingredients. Let's assume that slash pass slash test me 1234.aspx exists on the server. We are going to use options HTTP method. Our magic pattern or suffix will be slash tilde one dot rem. And we are going to use the star character. And uh, for the first request, we are going to target something that does not exist on the server. When we send this request with the options method, we get 200. In this case, I can tell you that the file does not exist. And because we use the options method, 200 here means that it does not exist. And if we send a similar request to um, star tilde one star, which means any short file names with tilde one in that directory, we get 404, which means that if a short file name with tilde one exists in that folder. Because of these different responses, then we know that we have an issue. So in the third request, we uh, you, we basically try to enumerate the file name. We put a letter there to see if we get a 404 or 200 from the server. So if you use letter T, which we know should be actually there, we get a 404, which means the file name um, starts with letter T. And if we use U, then we get a 200. So there is no short file names with a tilde one in it that starts with uh, letter U. So we can then uh, start enumerating the second letter. And so in here, I put letter D, we get 200, which means that the second letter is not D. And then if you use letter E, then we get a 404, which means that the second letter is actually letter E. We can enumerate the full file name like that. And then uh, for the extension, it is very similar. And then in the end, we can find out what the actual short file name is. So the next question is, how can we automate this? There are some tools that have been created for this purpose. So the first one is our short name scanner that is in Java and I created it, I think back in 2012 when I published uh, my findings and uh, it works, but it's old and it might be a little bit slow. There are some uh, Go ones uh, that have been created by different people. There's also a new uh, verb extension that has tried to address this issue. If you're using my iOS short name scanner, I really recommend you to have a look at uh, its config.xml file, as you probably need to customize it for your target. For example, you can add cookies or additional required headers, or you can use it to debug the tool. You can also change its accuracy according to your target to prevent some false positives or even true negatives. If you want to check this manually yourself, here is how I would do it. I choose several methods and several suffix, as you can see in this slide, to target short file names that should exist and one that should not exist. If the response changes, then I have a winner. You can automate this yourself using Burp Intruder. For a simple case, you need to use the attack type of cluster bomb and set the payload positions for the HTTP method, path, and the suffix. You can then identify differences in responses. Or if you are like me and would like to create hundreds of colorful repeated tabs, then you can do it all manually for different cases. Sometimes things do not follow the normal rules. When I face some difficulties or restrictions, I try to use long file names that I know may actually exist to see whether there is a short names for them. Use of the options method with a suffix without a wildcard also works on a long file name. So we can use it to detect whether or not a long file name actually exists. We cannot enumerate them due to the lack of the wildcards though. When we have a confirmation that a long file name exists, we can then try to see whether a short file name has been created for them without a wildcard. If we know the system is still making the short file names, fingers crossed, we can then try harder to find a potential method to use the wildcards again. Here are some tips and tricks that I would like to share with you. First of all, do not rely on the HTTP response status code only and compare the whole response as the smallest changes, such as 
additional headers or something in the body might be a key for enumeration. Kestrel and HTTP CS driver are not affected and do not confuse them with IIS. ASP pages can be served without extensions. Mind that when trying to find the real file name. The disclosure issue only affect physical files. So virtual files or virtual and application path on IES cannot be enumerated. Wildcards can be replaced with some other characters if they are blocked. You may or may not need URL encoding. The question mark should always be URL encoded though. Mind the WAFs as they can cause anomalies. And remember that space and period in the end of a file or a directory name in Windows can be considered as padding. This can come in handy sometimes. Here is how I normally run the OS short name scanner tool myself. Two in here means uh, that it will show me the output as it goes and 20 means the number of threads. You don't want to set this to a high number as it may create false results. The third argument is the URL you want to target with the path. And finally, you pass the config file to this tool. If you do not specify a config file, it will be ignored. As a second example, I thought to show you how IIS can disclose short names even from a restricted path. We will get an error if we want to access anything inside the bin directory as an example, as we should, otherwise the application source code could be disclosed. However, it is still possible to get a list of short names from the bin directory using colon colon dollar index allocation or its equivalent alternate data stream. Also, we still cannot download anything from the bin directory. It may help us a little bit to understand what libraries might have been used by the website. Also remember to escape the dollar sign if, for example, you're using PowerShell to run your tools. Other alternate data streams can also be useful, but there is no real benefit if you can detect the files even without them. Now that we have got a list of short names, how can we find the real file names as that's the final goal? People have approached this differently. Here are some common methodologies that we can use. It is often possible to guess the real names if we have already crawled the websites and have some of its contents. Search the sitemap for the start of the files to see if you can get a hit. The hit might be from a CSS or a JavaScript, but it can still be helpful. This is also useful to see the, the website's naming convention to see whether files normally end with a suffix or follow a specific pattern. Most long file names contain multiple words as well, so try to mix them with other words that are common. For example, if you have already tried fileupload.aspx and fileuploader.aspx, try fileuploadmanager.aspx as well. Use word lists or dictionaries. If a website is in a different language, you may need to include those words as well. The new hot topic these days is ChatGPT and AI, which can also be helpful to complete the file names for you. I've also included two tools here. I haven't tried them yet myself, but they might also be useful. Give them a try. Here is a simple ChatGPT prompt that I've created to get from short file names to long file names, or sh I should say real file names. It will give you 20 uh, potential guesses. Uh, it, you can increase it to 50. Uh, no matter how many short file names you provide to it, it only will give you 20 or 50 or whatever number you put there. Well, I think the maximum is 50. I would say perhaps try it, try it by uh, giving it just one file name and see how it does. Sometimes it works really well and sometimes what it gives you is not even close. Here is an example of how ChatGPT works. So I had found file up tilde oneash and I provided it to ChatGPT with the prompt that you saw and it gave me 20 guesses. Uh, on the left side, you see the 20 guesses using, using ChatGPT4 without internet browsing. And on the right side, you see this, uh, the same result, basically, but uh, by browsing the internet. They are quite similar, but the list was quite good because uh, my file was in there. Also, as you can see often, 
uh, it includes file upload.ashx and also file upload.aspx. This is the problem that we have with it. So if you want to automate this, perhaps you need to remove the ones that are not related to your target. Now here is an example that ChatGPT did not provide me with some good answers using the same prompt. My short file name was genr-tilde1.asp. I expected that gen is a prefix and er is a suffix and ChatGPT would detect this, but it initially completed the prefix as well rather than keeping the six first characters the same, so gen became general. The online browsing was also interesting. It kept the first six characters the same, but it did not change error to error in any of them. We can still work with these results, but it will require more filtering and changes. Back in MDSEC, a colleague of mine, Mohamed Salah, asked me during a research night what would happen if a file has a tilde character in it already and it's a long file name. This gave me an idea, and I realized that in very special cases we can enumerate the long file name and not just the short name using IIS. This is when a file has a tilde character following by a number anywhere in the file name. The enumeration is exactly the same as before but we do not stop after finding the first six characters. We can continue and basically find the whole file name. Here I show how we can find the real file name when it contains a tilde character following by a number. Let's say we have tested the path already and we know it is vulnerable and some short file names exist. In order to find this special kind of file names, we can use seven question marks following by uh, an asterisk character and then a tilde character and a number from zero to nine. As we have used seven question marks rather than six, this should not work normally unless we have a special long file name with a tilde character and a digit afterwards. If we get a, a positive hit, in this case a 404, we can continue our enumeration as normal until the whole special file name is revealed. Unfortunately, the job of finding the real file name can still be tricky if higher ASCII characters than 7F in hex or a plus sign has been used. Thank you everyone for staying with us until this point. I hope you have enjoyed the talk and it has been useful for you. Thank you.